Three years ago, a sprawling camp in the French town of Calais became a symbol of the world's refugee crisis. The jungle, as it was known, is now closed, but it was once home to thousands of desperate asylum seekers, mainly from the Middle East and Africa. After spending time there as a volunteer, British artist Kate Evans decided to make it the focus of a graphic novel. It's called Threads from the Refugee Crisis, and it's the first graphic novel ever to be long-listed for the Orwell Book Prize, which recognises outstanding political writing. Well, the artist Kate Evans joins me now from Bristol, and with me in the studio is Paul Gravett, a specialist in comic history and publishing. Kate Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, if I can start with you, congratulations. How do you feel making it onto the long list? Oh, I'm, I'm really pleased, not just personally, but also for comics in general. It's really, really thrilling to see graphic reportage being recognised as a serious medium. Hopefully we've got some images of your book. What is a graphic novel? Well, it's not a novel in that it's, it's not a work of fiction. A graphic novel is anything in... It's just a fancy word for comics, really. <laughs> <laughs> and are you a, an, a writer or an artist first, or both? Both. I'm really interested in the way that words and pictures work together. I don't think I could just do the pictures or the writing. I, I really, I have to have control over both. It's in the marriage between them both. You, you kind of get something that's more meaningful than just words alone. And why did you choose this subject? Because I, I remember going to Songat 20 years ago, um, you were clearly very moved by what you saw. I, I couldn't not write this book. I went as a volunteer. I didn't intend to make art about it. I didn't, I didn't turn up at Calais and go, oh, it's OK, the cartoonist is here. I was very much just interested in trying to be useful any way that I could. But I was so moved and I was so upset um, and I felt so urgently and passionately that this subject needed to be more widely known that I started work straight away. I visited three times. I only went for about 10 days in total, but that ended up forming an entire book. Uh, if I could just bring in Paul Gravett, you've seen the book. Are you surprised mm. that it's made it onto the long list? No, I'm very, very pleased uh, for Kate and also for the, for the medium. As Kate's saying, graphic novels have been getting more and more recognition. Uh, we can go back at least to the Pulitzer Prize for Art Spiegelman's Mouse. We can look at um, recent awards, for example, the Costa Prize for Biography, going to a graphic novel, The Daughter of a Father's Eyes. Um, this is a, a way that's not going to stop. And I think it's because at the moment the... We're surrounded by very fleeting ephemeral images. We can swipe past something, mm. we can go to another website, we can catch a bit of news here and there. A graphic novel, of course, is about fixed printed images, if it's in print form, of course, which you're in control of. As Kate was saying, the, the control it, of the reader is very, very important. But I think. is it not a less intense experience than reading a novel? It, I th I th is it not perhaps taking off partly because we are getting shorter attention spans? There, there, you could argue that. The argument, I think, is also that the graphic novel, as it visualises a, a powerful situation, it brings you immediately into the, into the actuality and, uh, of the situation. You're not having to read through descriptions. Can you imagine trying to do threads in, in a purely text form? It simply wouldn't work. Um, and because of this, you, you are then much more engaged. The reader is very active in a comic. Um, you're actually looking at words and pictures at the same time and interpreting them in many, many ways. They can actually crystallise and they can also, most importantly, perhaps generate genuine empathy for the subjects. Well, Kate, you obviously clearly wanted to, mm. to do that. Just tell me about some of the people that you met and how you translated them into your book. Um, it's... <sighs> In a way, I, I just met ordinary people, and, and they are ordinary people. It's ordinary mothers, ordinary children, ordinary young men escaping desperate situations and living in desperate conditions. Um, what I didn't do was go back and ask someone specifically, oh, what are all the terrible things you've been through in your life? Because the fact that their basic needs are not being met and they are being shunted from one European country to the next and living in absolutely appalling conditions that's bad enough, you know? And, and yet there's, there's a huge anti-immigration wave uh, in many parts of the world. We've seen the Windrush controversy just this week in this country. Are you, you're, not, you're kind of going against the grain a bit, aren't you? Well, but we're not going against the grain with the Windrush controversy because what people are recognising is that people have got a right to be in this country. These people have got a right to be in this country. What we're seeing around the world is the cumulative effects of wars, of the military industrial complex, of climate change, of large areas of the world being uninhabitable. Now we have a clear choice. 
Do we put up the walls? Do we put up the fortresses? Do we carry on letting tens of thousands of people die in the Mediterranean, innocent people? Do we do that or do we adopt a proper humanitarian, humanitarian approach, which also, weirdly, has the effect of benefiting our economy? It makes no economic sense to keep people out. Paul, do you think that message will be taken by people who read this book? Will it just be preaching to the converted or might it reach new audiences? I'm sure it can reach new audiences because it is very accessible, it's very human. Kate's uh, integrity and passion come through in every page, but more importantly, we, we connect with the, the ordinary people who are going through this. Orwell, I think, was a very keen supporter of comics. He always saw them as a potential medium, even though they were, could sometimes preach very negative imperialist and racist values in the past. Mm -hmm. Now they're a medium that communicates important messages very, very effectively. Paul Gravett and uh, Kate Evans, it's fantastic to speak to you both. Uh, good luck, and we'll hear about the shortlist in the next uh, few weeks, and uh, great uh, luck to both of you for this. Thanks very much indeed. I'm on Twitter, at Geetha Goramuthi. See you soon. Bye-bye.